This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 551, Six Ways to Make Rejection Suck Less, by Stephen Worley of lifeskillsthatmatter.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host here, and welcome back to Optimal Startup Daily. Hope you're having a great day and start to the week. This is where I read to you from some of the best blogs on entrepreneurship. I do that every day, and uh, we're gonna get right to it now as we optimize your life. Six Ways to Make Rejection Suck Less by Stephen Worley of lifeskillsthatmatter.com. Want to figure out how to make rejection suck less? I mean, who doesn't, am I right? Rejection may make you feel like you're not worthy, unlikable, not heard, misunderstood, and not accepted. You feel like an imposter. Getting rejected reminds you of all the doubts you already have about your abilities to build your business. The number one action for building any business our Accelerator members avoid the most is outreach. Business is about serving other humans, plain and simple. If you aren't regularly finding ways to connect with potential clients, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. Most people who start a business for the first time focus on every other aspect of their business to avoid doing outreach. They'll tinker on their website. They will fuss over the creation of their product. They will obsess over the name of their business they will overthink whether or not to organize their business as an LLC. Now, I'm not suggesting any of those actions aren't important to the development of your business, but they also provide a convenient excuse for avoiding the most important action for growing your business, meeting other people. Why you, me, and everyone else avoids rejection. Rejection is an unavoidable part of working for yourself. Not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone is going to like your product or service. Not everyone is ready to buy from you when you want them to. Let's face it, humans don't like rejection because it hurts. It hurts us emotionally. We take it personally. We feel like our very being is being attacked. Thousands of years ago, when humans roamed the earth in tribes, acceptance by our peers was quite literally a matter of life and death. If you got kicked out of the tribe, your chances of survival plummeted when you were all on your own. We live in much different times, but we still have brains coded to believe that rejection is a threat to our very existence. Our brain makes rejection feel so painful, as painful as experiencing physical pain, so we prioritize acceptance to increase our chances of survival. If you get rejected by a potential client, you're not going to die, but your brain still makes you feel like you might. The first step for reducing the threat of rejection is to recognize its evolutionary roots. Why people reject others, and why you do it too. As much as you don't like rejection, you still do it to others. Funny how that works, isn't it? The next step to reducing the fear of rejection is to recognize why you do it. Most likely, you're not doing it to make someone else feel bad, right? You're doing it because you don't feel a connection. You can't like everyone, and not everyone is going to like you. You're doing it because the timing just isn't right. Someone might love your service, but they just don't have a need for it at this moment. You're doing it because of your own assumptions and fears. Many times the person rejecting you is projecting their own issues onto you. Rejection is usually not personal to the person giving the rejection, but frequently the person receiving rejection takes it personally. Further weaken the power of rejection over you by putting yourself in the shoes of the person rejecting you so you learn to take their rejection less personally. Six ways to make rejection suck less. It takes practice to get more comfortable with rejection. It's an inevitable part of doing business. Following are some exercises you can give a try to start making rejection a little less sucky. One, misalignment, not rejection. The next time you're declined by a potential client, think of it as misalignment instead of rejection. When someone tells you no, they're actually doing you a favor. Maybe your values aren't aligned and you're just never going to click. Maybe the person is really into your product or service, but it's just not the right time for them to buy. When someone tells you no, they're saving you time and energy so you can go find someone else who's more aligned with you. Two, beware the data point of one. Don't fall into the abyss of self-doubt when just one of many potential clients tells you no. Stop chasing after the person who doesn't like you. Seek out the people who are into you and your service. Don't overemphasize an individual interaction as the key to your success. Get in the habit of regularly seeking out many prospective clients to engage or learn how to use the rule of three to defend against the data point of one. Three, yes-no ratio. 
track how many no's it takes on average to get a yes when you land a new client. For example, for every yes, you might get an average of 10 no's. This helps give context to the rejection you experience by knowing the path to yes has to go through rejection first. For every person that becomes a member of our 30-day accelerator, we lose an average of 10 email subscribers each time we promote it. Business isn't about keeping everyone happy. It's about finding your people and keeping them super happy. Four, process your emotions. Even if you can rationalize why you got rejected, it still hurts. Take the time to process it so you can move on more quickly the next time you get rejected. Five, rejection therapy. Build up your experience with rejection by inviting more of it. Like anything else in life, the more you practice dealing with rejection, the better you'll get at it. And six, learn from every no. Did you realize getting a no is sometimes more valuable than getting a yes? The next time a potential client tells you no, ask them why so you can improve your business. Maybe you'll learn to refine your target client. Maybe you'll learn about a problem more important to your clients than you realized. Maybe you'll discover you need to adjust how you engage potential clients by clarifying how you communicate with them. The more you learn from your no's, the more you can close the gap between your yes to no ratio. You just listened to the post titled Six Ways to Make Rejection Suck Less by Stephen Worley of lifeskillsthatmatter.com. You're ready to take your business to the next level, but you'll need the right team to make it happen. Indeed makes it easy to hire and build a team with the right skills to make your dreams a reality. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. I love that Indeed makes hiring all in one place so easy. Indeed helps you see your top talent's abilities faster with 135 assessment tests. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash startup. Offer valid through April 30th. Go to indeed.com slash startup to claim your $75 credit before April 30th. Indeed.com slash startup. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And big thank you to Stephen for giving us permission to narrate from his blog. Uh, You can come visit his site, which I have linked in this episode's description and at oldpodcast.com. Stephen started Life Skills That Matter in 2016 to show you how work is changing as you know it and how you can change work to your advantage. He's been working for himself since getting laid off back on election day in 2000. He is obsessed with researching and experimenting with alternative ways of working and he now makes enough money to live the life he wants to live without losing his mind from overworking. He's also got a podcast where he has interviewed over 500 people who have made the transformation to self-employment, and that is called Life Skills That Matter Podcast, and you can find that on his site as well. Again, it's lifeskillsthatmatter.com. But that should do it for today. Hope you are having a great start to your week, and I will be right back here reading to you tomorrow, and that is where your optimal life awaits.